Despite what most people might think, Amtrak is actually expanding, and they're expanding on a future high-speed rail corridor. And when I say high-speed rail corridor, I'm not talking about the Northeast. So what is this corridor? It's called the S Line. These trains will be able to go up to 110 miles per hour along this 95 mile corridor. This is going to be transformational for our region. We're finally delivering the world-class passenger rail service that Americans ought to have. Please exit to the rear door. As always, thanks to my patrons. Your donations make this content possible. Welcome to episode 2 of the Richmond to Raleigh S-Line. For those who are new to this channel or don't know what episode 1 is, it's on the RoboRail channel. That video goes more over the history of the S-Line and how it got abandoned in the first place. Today we're going to start from where we left off last episode. We're going to talk about the current passenger service restoration efforts. In order to understand this project, we're going to have to start from the very beginning. All it takes for us is to look at a certain act created in 1991. On December 18th, five high-speed rail corridors were authorized under the Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act of 1991, with former Secretary of Transportation Andrew H. Carr Jr. announcing these five corridors. In the Midwest High-Speed Rail Corridor, linking Chicago, Illinois, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, St. Louis, Missouri, and Cleveland, Ohio. The Southeast High-Speed Rail Corridor, connecting Charlotte, North Carolina, with Richmond, Virginia, and Washington, D.C. The wow! You know, it's actually really satisfying when these high-speed rail projects that I've talked about for years actually have the same origin but have taken two completely different methods to trying to get completed. One is tearing through farmland, building huge viaducts and boring through mountains, and the other one, well, hey, yeah, let's, let's talk about the other one. The Southeast High-Speed Rail Corridor is in different stages of development. I mean, we know the cities that need to be connected, but we don't really know what alignment needs to be used to get to those cities, like at all. The only alignment that we can be certain of is between Richmond and Raleigh. The Raleigh to Richmond R2R program and specifically the S-Line project are part of the larger Southeast High-Speed Rail Corridor. As the title of the series suggests, this section of the alignment uses abandoned right-of-way. Now, this abandoned right-of-way comes with a lot of different restrictions due to its current track geometry. There are plenty of bends and curves along the S-Line, along with dozens of at-grade crossings. This is why the top speed of the new corridor can only be 110 miles per hour. But this whole Raleigh to Richmond corridor is kind of and annoyingly far in the future. What is currently being done? Let's talk about the first phase of this project, the Piedmont service extension to Wake Forest. The North Carolina Department of Transportation was awarded $1.1 billion in federal funds by the Biden administration to extend the current state-owned Piedmont service past Raleigh to Wake Forest. Amtrak and the North Carolina Department of Transportation did a 20% match for a total of $1.3 billion for the extension. Now, I know some of you may be a little bit unfamiliar with the Piedmont service. So what is the Piedmont service? The Piedmont is a regional passenger train operated by Amtrak and the North Carolina Department of Transportation. What does this mean? The service is operated by Amtrak crews, while the other operations are handled by the North Carolina Department of Transportation. The state sets schedules, owns the equipment, and handles the majority of the marketing, while the maintenance of said equipment is performed by state contractors. So let's talk about this equipment that allows the state to run four daily trains between its largest cities. The North Carolina Department of Transportation's rolling stock is sort of... old. I mean, the locomotives are from the early 90s, but the passenger cars are from the 50s and 60s. Motive power for the Piedmont service is provided by eight state-owned locomotives. Two of them are EMD F59 PHIs, and six of them are EMD F59 PHs. These six locomotives were formerly owned by Go Transit in Toronto, Canada, but have been repainted and rebuilt into the North Carolina livery. Now, the state-owned passenger rail cars for the Piedmont service were originally built by Pullman Standard and the St. Louis Car Company in the 1960s. The five lounge baggage cars 
and the one coach baggage car were originally built by the St. Louis Car Company in the 1950s. Now, of course, all of these have been refurbished with modern amenities, but still, the age is uh, clearly there. Like, the locomotives have a top speed of 110 miles per hour, but I can't really say the same for the rail cars. I mean, these are some of the oldest mainline passenger cars seeing daily revenue service in the US. And rolling stock procurements for the Piedmont service has been a little bit iffy in the past couple of decades. Now here's where the funny business starts happening. In 2017, the North Carolina Department of Transportation couldn't help but clown around and purchase nine former circus train cars to be restored into passenger service. I guess the entire department was on a budget of $400,000. Squidward, is that you? Uh, I, uh... In August 2019, the Federal Railroad Administration, FRA, awarded the North Carolina Department of Transportation $76.9 million in funding to purchase 13 new passenger cars. In February 2020, the North Carolina Department of Transportation didn't find the joke funny anymore and decided to put the clown cars into storage. Authorities aren't sure whether it was Dumbo or Pennywise, but in March 2022, somebody set the circus train on fire. Four of the cars were destroyed, and the other five were put back on sale and sold for $55,000. What? They could've gave me a car! In May of that year, the North Carolina Department of Transportation received another $80 million grant to replace the rest of the rolling stock. So why am I telling you all this? Well, if you didn't know, Siemens is building a new manufacturing facility in Lexington, North Carolina. If everything is going to schedule, the facility will open up in a couple of months. And it's strongly implied that the Piedmont service will most likely get some form of aero train set, easily suitable for the 110 mile per hour service on the S-Line. However, none of this has been confirmed by the North Carolina Department of Transportation or Amtrak. With that being said, even if the department was able to build the corridor faster, they still wouldn't get the rolling stock necessary to run the service on the corridor until 2030. Now a spokesperson has reached back out to me, stating, we don't have too many updates as of now, we're mostly focused on the great separation projects in Raleigh that are part of the S-Line project. We should have more updated info mid to late summer. So at least you guys can know that there is some progress being made. Don't forget, 400 likes on this video for the next part of the S-Line series, which will be the final episode. With that being said, if I earned a like and subscription, I love you, and if you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. Doors open.